Uh, as I indicated earlier, we're going to get started at the subcommittee listening to the informational items. And then when uh, I expect two senators to leave the Capitol momentarily, and that would give us a quorum. But I have Mr. Hagman coming up, so we're one short. As soon as we have another member, we'll have a quorum and we can start voting on items. Uh, welcome, Mr. Hagman. I, I didn't pick it. <laughs> it was, this should have been taken care of 12 days ago. <laughs> Just an observation. Um, okay. So we're going to do non-voting items. Oh, yes. Uh, introductions. We do have a new member of the board, Cesar Diaz, who joined us. He was actually ready for the May uh, meeting, but uh, we had to cancel it due to a lack of quorum. But welcome. Thank you very much. Good to have you. And also in announcements, uh, we would like to congratulate our new deputy executive officer for OPSC, Juan Mireles, got his uh, promotion. So congratulations, sir. And uh, now that you have your promotion, I appreciate it if you didn't send me emails at 10 o'clock at night and 11 again. You, you have that habit of uh, disrupting my calmness at home at times. No. Um, okay. Ms. Silverman, would you please take us through? Uh, we can't, we're not, we don't have a quorum, so I won't even try to set up a quorum. We can't do the minutes, so can you go to the financials, please, and start go, with that? You want to cover the executive officer statement? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, we have several things to announce tonight. Um, obviously, we didn't have the opportunity to meet in May, so we had a few pending items that we rolled over. But the most, obviously, the most critical item that we're bringing forward tonight is actually in tab 14. We actually are bringing priority funding apportionments. Uh, that's a result of the general obligation bond sale that the Treasurer's Office actually executed in April. So we'll be bringing forward a, a significant amount of funding items in tab 14. And we have a joint use funding update. Um, we obviously uh, had a discussion at the April 2000, excuse me, at the April board meeting, and there was a conversation about how much money is available for the joint use program. There was $600,000 allotted for the program, and there was a conversation about what other funds we could use in lieu of a uh, final finalization of a Prop 1A funds being available. Uh, we obviously received a subsequent opinion from the Attorney General's Office that's also tucked away in tab 16. But we do want to share with the board, as far as being transparent, we are presenting three items tonight uh, as part of your consent agenda. Uh, on pages 67 through 69, uh, that we're bringing forward three uh, fully funded joint use projects, and they will actually have cash associated with those projects. So that's great news. I know that's something that the senator has been championed for quite some time, and we're actually uh, thrilled that we can bring those opportunities forward. The next item is we give a board the update on Compton Unified and Selma Unified appeal request. Uh, we actually had some ongoing uh, request uh, for a legal opinion uh, with the Attorney General's office related to whether or not the district can retain financial hardship funds. And so we're still in the hold pattern, still trying to wait for some uh, outcomes there. And so we'll be providing those items at a future board date. Uh, members, uh, on this point, uh, we've, we've had the AG taking a look at this thing for a while, and I've looked at some of the documents submitted by uh, Compton. And it is clear that we do not have a statute of limitations, uh, and we've been relying on the fact that they're bond money and is the bond statute of limitations that applies. With your permission, I would like to just have those items be moved forward to the next meeting and then direct the Implementation Committee to go and work on regulations to provide us with reasonable statute of limitations that satisfy the AG's office. Because I don't want to be dealing with this issue on an ongoing basis, and it's going to be a question of what is the appropriate statute of limitations. So I think we're better off if we, at this point, deal with this too now, but ask staff to go out and come up with something. Uh, they're going to have, through the Implementation Committee, they're going to have input from the different uh, stakeholders, and, and I don't know what the reasonable is, but, you know, 20 years does not seem reasonable to me. I mean, the IRS doesn't have me hold my documents for that long. But so in all fairness to school districts, I think that we, in the absence of a statute of limitations in this program, we ought to come up with that regulation and have staff come up with that. Does that, do I see people? Yes. So, go, so bring those items forward next month. Um, I think we, we need to move on those. We shouldn't have those districts out there pending. And we should have Mr. Savage, 
bring your troops together and come up with something that makes sense, uh, that protects everybody and gives uh, some guideline to the affected parties. I'm sorry I interrupted. Go ahead. No, no, that's great news. Uh, the next item we would like to share is the gas pipeline concurrence for facility hardship projects. We actually had a discussion uh, last spring sometime uh, related to a Marysville project, and they actually had some, some really health and safety concerns related to um, natural gas pipelines that were near schools. So we were trying to overcome some of the challenges of uh, finding an entity uh, that would actually issue a state-level state concurrence. Uh, Department of Conservation is who we relied on in the past to provide some state level concurrence. Uh, but what was actually raised in the last meeting um, that we, we brought this issue forward is the uh, district had relied on uh, UC California Berkeley uh, Center of Catastro Catastrophic Risk Management to perform a third party review and give them a concurrence letter um, to obviously identifying that there were some serious gas pipeline issues uh, that would uh, create some catastrophic event. So in lieu of that, um, since we have no identified government agency to uh, assist in that area, we encourage districts to reach out to uh, UC uh, California Berkeley to uh, provide that, that report to us to get us a concurrence letter. So again, uh, we're providing an update on the path that we, we recommend that uh, districts seek. And then another item we want to share is a high performance incentive grant uh, program. The regulations for adding that component to the charter uh, program has been um, enacted and so as of May 15th of this year, uh, those uh, charter schools that actually want to seek a high performance grant uh, may do so. And again, high performance uh, promotes the green or high performance attributes including design materials and promote energy efficiency and water efficiency, natural lighting, improve indoor and air quality and recycle materials. So it's a great program and we would encourage charters to also access that program as well. Uh, another item, again, the transition to electronic board agenda. Um, I know we've been speaking about this very item for the last few months, and again, we are publishing the agenda in electronic format, and that translates for a lot of energy savings and, um, again, saving to staff time and reducing our carbon footprint is a, is a great thing, and we also want to transition uh, that electronic meeting agenda for future meetings at implementation committee and also some of the subcommittees that uh, the state allocation board does host. But just for clarification, we'll continue to have hard copies for the audience when we have meetings, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. So if I can direct you to the following page, 6A, and we have three more items to provide an update. Uh, again, reminding folks out there in the community, upcoming priority of funding certification period starts July 1st. Again, that's really important. Uh, realizes a 30-day certification round. Uh, that period ends August 9th. And that applies to those folks who actually have projects on the unfunded list. And you, again, submit a certification. And those projects are actually going to be approved in consent agenda as an unfunded approval to today will also qualify um, for the certification round. So again, uh, we need to receive that uh, fiscal certification request by August 9th. Lisa, you mean July 11th, correct? Yes, it starts July 11th and ends. August 9th. Thank you. And the overcrowded relief grant funding cycle, uh, just to highlight that we have an open cycle that actually terminates July 31st, and so we want to encourage those folks who have an overcrowded relief project um, and they are qualified to submit a, an application, please do so by July 31st. And then we have uh, several items we want to update the board. Uh, we have a numerous uh, working groups and subcommittee uh, meetings that are, are in progress, and just wanted to share with the board, the audit work group meeting is going to be held July 3rd. So we welcome those folks who want to participate in that venue. Um, it would also be webcast as well. Uh, the rules and procedures subcommittee meeting will host that August 15th, uh, a time to be determined. And uh, again, we'll, we want to raise to the board's attention that uh, there was discussion uh, about an overall program review. And we were really trying to center that meeting around July. However, we were having some challenges with some of our members being present. So we have uh, not determined what date uh, we'll bring that item forward. And that's what I have. OK. Ms. Moore? Um, Lisa, on the overcrowded relief grant, you indicated it was a final um, application funding cycle ending July 31st. And I'm sure you'll bring those uh, applications forward. At the same time, will you also bring um, the possibility of another funding cycle forward to the board? 
I think that's that's what we agreed to have that follow up conversation after we wrapped up that Ms. filing. Ms. Moore, cycle. if you can get closer to the mic, I'm getting signals. Thank you. Just asking that when you bring forward the final funding round for or overcrowded relief grant, that we also have the option to extend another funding round um, as part of as part of any um, as part of that discussion. We'll certainly do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So next. Okay. Let's move forward to financials. Before we do that, are there any uh, excuse me? Are there any comments from the public on that? Okay, move on, please. So, in tab five is just an update on the status of fund releases. Um, obviously, the purpose of this report is to present um, an ongoing activity of uh, general obligation bonds. This program has been receiving since uh, April 2009, and I'll just quickly grab your attention to turn to page 88. We've actually been quite successful over the uh, last few years uh, dispersing funds and so we wanted to highlight uh, the 30-day activity uh, for, for May actually did result in $34 million being dispersed in the program. And if I can slide you back one more page on page 87, uh, if you look in that lower category, we did want to introduce a new column or a new uh, bracket to share with the board is we are introducing the April 2012 bond proceeds. Um, in the lower column there, um, again, highlighting to the board that we will be providing 90 days to, uh, certification to those projects to access the cash and we'll be providing updates on a regular basis. So again, the goal is to highlight that even though we show a full disbursement of, uh, excuse me, full complement of the funds being uh, available, but the drawdown should be rather quickly once we uh, actually approve those products tonight. And we want to move forward to the status of funds. Do we have any other questions on some of the other reports? Any comments from the public on this? Move forward. Okay. If I can direct your attention to tab six, which is our financial reports on our status of our existing bond authority. So we wanted to highlight to the board, um, we have two columns there we wanted to share as far as unfunded approvals. Uh, this month in the top category in Proposition 1D, which is highlighted in orange. Uh, we actually processing $54.1 million in unfunded approvals. And we also are processing in the green category, which is Proposition 55, uh, $47.8 million in new construction projects. And we're not presenting uh, any unfunded approvals in Proposition 47. Um, we had no activity this month there. So in total, we actually are processing over a two-month period over $101.9 million um, to this board. We also wanted to highlight in the miscellaneous adjustment column, uh, we actually are processing $1 million, and those are just conversions for charter projects, um, and that represents $3.5 million between Proposition 1D and Proposition 47. And if I can get your attention to the following page, page 93. Uh, oh, I just have a comment. Please. Um, so this is now reflective of the transfer of the critically overcrowded school funding of the last meeting, correct? That's correct. And that is why we are not out of new construction, not out yet of new construction funding, correct? That's correct. When we transfer the critically overcrowded school uh, funds in Proposition 55, it reverts to new construction, but it has to stay within that bond program. So it, that's why it still remains in Proposition 55. Okay. And the subsequent page is uh, an activity of Proposition 1A, and that's where we actually are providing some consent approvals tonight under those particular categories, and we'll have a further discussion about what we do with remaining uh, money in that program, whether or not we actually fully fund other projects in the joint use uh, program. But we also wanted to highlight in the emergency repair program, we are actually providing um, a approvals off that unfunded list, which is really important. I know we've had some unmet need in this program for quite some time, and we actually have $200,000 in cash um, that will be matching with those projects on that estimated unfunded list for emergency repair program. So those, facts, those folks who are actually receiving uh, that award will actually have the ability to have the funds released tomorrow. So that's great news in that particular program. I have... We can go through other Any items or questions? we can do the short version tonight. No, okay, thank you. Any comments from the public on that? Yes, step up, please. Uh, 
Hi. Good afternoon. This is Richard Gonzalez. I'm with Richard Gonzalez and Associates. Uh, one of the things that I was hoping to hear, uh, it was great to hear that there was actual cash of $200,000 in the um, emergency repair program, but I also understand there's ca actual cash on hand in other programs too, and there's nothing reported on any of the agenda items that reflects actual cash available to the State Allocation Board. Is that something that we should be tracking or make available since we are trying to uh, fund as many projects as possible during these priorities and funding rounds? Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Hagman, you had a question in item seven. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm, I'm just reviewing as we're, as we're talking. And we've, we've had discussions before on this board of modernization, and we, we, you know, we were forcing schools at one point to build portables that with, were basically replacing 30-year bond money with portables that don't last 30 years. And one of the requests from this school, particular school district is to replace, instead of rebuild two buildings, is to replace them with permanent portable buildings. Now, is this, General clarification, what is a permanent portable building, and will it outlast the bond money that we got to pay back for 30 years? Staff? There, there's a distinction in the program between portables and, and modulars. Portables, um, actually modulars, we do consider to be uh, permanent under the program guidelines. Portables, they, they, they are different. Um, we do count them differently in terms of calculating eligibility for modernization and um, new construction, but we don't take a look at the, the lifespan of the portables. It's just the general designation that we used to determine whether uh, what kind of capacity districts have in, in calculating eligibility for modernization and new construction. Uh, Mr. Hagman, maybe I could also clarify. Modular buildings are, there's a number of different types of modular buildings that are available that are not portables, including uh, concrete and steel frame. The buildings that this district is proposing to do are stick built with steel frame, stucco exteriors, metal roofs. There's no durability issues that are found in portable buildings, so I think that it's an appropriate expenditure. No, absolutely. I'm not necessarily questioning the, the request. Um, I'm more of this. You know, we've been pushing for a while, it's still basic philosophy that you shouldn't borrow money longer than it's going to take for the building to last. And so I make sure that these things, not just counting for pupil numbers and eligibility numbers, but we are looking at the, the length of quality of construction to last beyond the term for us to pay back these bonds. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Hagman. Okay, uh, we have two centers that just joined us, so if you could please take the roll so we can establish quorum. Yes, thank you. Senator Lowenthal? Here. Senator Hancock? Here. Senator Wyland? Assemblymember Brownlee? Assemblymember Buchanan? Assemblymember Hagman? Here. Esteban Almanza? Here. Kathleen Moore? Here. Cesar Diaz? Here. Pedro Reyes? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. We, we have gone through the executive officer's report. Um, we talked about some of the finances. Can we, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. There's been moved a second. Any questions, comments? Any comments from the public? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I have it. Thank you. Uh, can we go to consent? And may I add a special consent? Mr. Hagman, are you okay with tab six being a special consent? Tab nine? Seven. seven. Tab seven. Tab nine, prevailing wage monitoring grants. Tab 10, Browns Elementary. Tab 11, Elk Grove Unified. Tab 12, Escalon Unified. Tab 13, Priority Funding Regulation Amendments. And Tab 14, Priority Funding Apportionment, 637 million. I'd like to, is there a motion to approve? Move and second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, I should have asked for public comment, but since it was all moving forward and consent, I'm sure people are happy with that. We'll have open for public comment later unless people feel so compelled that we should resent our vote. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Silverman, where do we go from here? We go to Aroma San Juan, tab eight. Tab eight, thank you. Are there any other action items? I'm about to lose my, my senators. Is there anything else that we can move to? The six, we did. 
Yes, special consent. Yes. Aromas, okay, go ahead. Take us through tab eight. Tab eight's an appeal by the Aroma San Juan Unified School District. Uh, at the March 28, 2012 meeting, the board uh, staff presented an item to the board to request the district's uh, financial hardship status based on other evidence uh, of reasonable effort. The board didn't take action on this request, but instead directed staff to explore other advanced apportionment options in the school facility program. Uh, the district has since rescinded their appeal to obtain financial hardship status, but they have still indicated that they have a need to um, obtain funding for uh, an advanced uh, apportionment for plan approvals. A little background on this particular school site. The district does have six, seven buildings that have qualified under the size of mitigation program. Um, now that they receive the, the, the eligibility criteria, their next step is to go through the process and obtain the necessary plan approvals from the division of the state architect. Uh, one of those things is that they have to perform a geological hazard study in order to determine if they have active trace fault lines. This analysis does require some trench work, which the district estimates would cost about $203,000. Uh, the results of this study will determine whether the buildings need to be replaced or rehabilitated. So the district is asking for funding to complete these geological hazard studies. Staff has reviewed all of the programs that we administer to see if there's uh, an opportunity or a mechanism to provide funding to this district. Um, most of the projects in the school facility program require a local match. Those projects uh, require that districts use their local match to pay for all of the upfront cost to plan and design and go through the process of obtaining the plan approvals from the Division of the State Architect and the Department of Education. Once they get the plans approvals, then they come in and request funding from the state to provide the state's share. In few cases where districts do not have the local match, there are mechanisms to provide them money to get uh, for planning and site. These programs include the Financial Hardship Program, the Charter School Facilities Program, and the Career Technical Educational Program. Again, all those programs do provide funding for plans, uh, for plan approval, for design costs, upfront costs, because they don't have the ability to provide the local match. The situation with the Roma San Juan is different because they are now, uh, they are not financial hardship, so presumably they have a local match to pay for these planning costs. Therefore, staff has determined that we don't have a mechanism currently under the school facility program to provide them this advanced apportionment. The board does have the option of creating a new process that will um, provide design funding to districts that do have a local match towards their project. Now, keep in mind that this would be a substantial change to the school facility program. Creating this new process will allow more applicants to receive um, size mitigation funding for the assessment of the hazards instead of providing funding for the actual mitigation. Mr. Morales, let me, let me interrupt you for a second. Um, is there anybody here from Aromas? This was the members, just to refresh your memories, this is the school district that did the digging around, and we asked staff to go out there and see if there's any way we can provide any resources to them. Uh, from my perspective, we've asked them. They turn every rock, they turn every couch over, and they couldn't find anything that they need. So the idea here, then, is does the board feel compelled to essentially create a new program or change the regulations to provide funding in a different alternative? My sense is no. Uh, there's, there's, number one, there's not a lot of resources left anyway, and so I'm not that compelled at this point uh, to try to change the way the program works, but that's just my sense. Does anybody have any questions or comments that they want to do anything different? No. no. Mr. Hagman. I'm generally agreeing with you. I mean, with some limitations, I mean, a lot of these school districts don't have the operational cash to go out and hire experts to go figure this stuff out. But, like, when they present it, they don't know how much it's going to be until you start to do the project. Right. Um, but this money is meant for those hard place schools to either relocate them or fix them up for that big one when it comes. So I'm torn, but I, I hate to set a new regulation where this leaves it open ended, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I can see these things easily growing and growing, and you start a project, and all of a sudden you think you're in for a hundred thousand, ends up being you know a million and a half mm -hmm. or something. You need the money real quickly, so I, I'm torn. I would like to give them some assistance, and I don't know if there's a way to. And I, I read the report, and I know they tried all, pretty much everything else, but we got to have some college or universities out there that 
need some projects to figure this stuff out because that's what they do the research right. on on future geologists. I just don't know what else to do. To give them something I'm good with, it's just yeah. I hate to leave it open in as open regulation as well. Okay. So can we move on to the next item? Mr. Senator Lothal. Yeah, I have to let, I, I wonder if you might indulge me just for a sure. second. Uh, um, when going, meeting with my staff this week, kind of going over, and I'm not sure whether this was in the minutes or the status, I just needed some clarification. I was going through and I asked some, um, and in the discussions, and I looked up, the, you know, and followed the discussions, it indicated that that $36 million was not bond authority, but really was cash. It really was, there was $36.2 million. And in the April 2012 status of funds, it showed $36.2 million in funds available. Per the uh, chair's instructions, uh, we, as of June, if, as we defeased it, there was no longer uh, an item called uh, uh, a lease purchase program and no more no longer was there this 36.2 million dollars which I assumed had just been transferred but we had just heard recently in the uh, uh, in a staff briefing and this is where I got confused and wanted to bring up that we really didn't defease uh, 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 defease all the 36 million we defeased only 16 million dollars uh, and the remaining 20 million dollars was really bond authority we didn't really defease that if we eliminated $36.2 million, where did the other $20 million go? Sure, I'll, I'll, I can explain that one actually. Um, what it is, you have two, two separate pots. Uh, one pot is actually bond proceeds. The other was a $20 million bond authority that those bonds were never sold. Even though you mentioned at that time that it was all cash at that meeting, you told us at that April meeting it was we all thought cash. that it was uh, thirty that it was money that we could not use. Right, but we thought it was all cash. That's what I, I'm just wondering because I looked and recalled you telling us it was you who told us that it was it was not bond authority. It was all cash. Subsequent to the meeting, I learned that it was twenty million was bond authority that was never exercised. And it did not make any sense to exercise it because the Where's Thank you. It was part of the consent item. And thank you for listening. Uh, my name is Eva Luke. I'm the Chief Business Official for Glendale Unified School District. And I was here to reference two pages in your agenda. One was uh, page 190 that indicates that you have $5.5 million left in Prop 1D monies after your approvals today. And then on page 203 where it has the listing of your Prop 1D projects that you're approving. Um, you, you're funding through your July 28th date. And if you were to go into July 29th, uh, there would be enough dollars there to fund Glendale Unified's $4.3 million ORG project that, that we submitted if you went one day further. There is another school district with a project on that day, and uh, they're not in time stamp order. But if you were to fund all projects that you had with your $5.5 million, you could fund Glendale's at 4.3. And then there's another one for 100000 on that day as well. There is a, a project of 10.8 million that would not be able to be funded. For Glendale Unified, we have a, a shovel ready project. It's our elementary school. We're preparing our interim housing to, to get the project going. Um, and, and it's very significant to us. And I believe it's significant to get the dollars out into the economy. And we were just here to ask, could you um, use all of the dollars that you have, that 5.5 million, to fund one more project, 4.3 million, which is in your, your sequence of, of projects on your list on page 203. That was our request. Thank you. Thank you. OK. I think this is an important issue. So. Can, can staff talk about how Oakland is ahead of um, is ahead of Glendale on the list, having the same list date, 
And can we talk through that a little bit and see if there's any um, uh, possibility of addressing this issue? There are three projects with the same receive date that have submitted certifications um, and, are, and are eligible to compete. But because they have the same receive date, um, we don't have enough funding to cover all three. And that's why we didn't fund. Right now, the next one in line is, is for $10 million. And the way they're placed on the unfunded list right now, it's based on numerical order if they're on the same receive date. So in this particular case, we, we have $5 million, but we don't have enough to cover the three that are on the same receive date, so we didn't provide funding for any of those three. Are there any opportunity for any additional money to revert between now and July? Um, do we know if we have any? We actually do have some projects that could, uh, we have until the end of this month to come in for the time limit on fund release. So it's somewhere in the area about $24 million. So okay. there, there could be additional monies that are going to be available. But, but isn't this cert list over July 10th? That's correct. So before we meet again, this cert list is dead. And Glendale's opportunity, Oakland's opportunities are dead um, until the next funding round. Correct? That's correct. They would have to compete under the next filing round. Um, and then that would be, you know, that filing round ends in August and means that you probably wouldn't be before the board until September or October. So their, their window of opportunity from a potential, you know, going to construction in June gets extended to a window of opportunity should they be competitive in the next funding round till almost September, October. So it's a pretty, it could be a pretty critical issue. And I know that it's not one that's, it's no one's fault that it turns out this way, but I'm wondering if there's a possibility to, you know, push that funding out, because otherwise it sits in our coffers for till October, and it doesn't do anybody any good there. Um, if, if we had the 10 million, would you go to Oakland? Um, Who would be next? If they were the line? same received date, we would have the same challenge. Do you, do you split a received date if we have the funding? No. We try to cover all the projects that have the same received date. Now that's the problem right there. Because we don't, again, we don't have a, a mechanism to prioritize them with the same received date. Uh, going back to your, to your point, Ms. Moore, this is something that the board did uh, wrestle with some time ago. In fact, we have regulations as part of this agenda that the board just approved to try and mitigate um, when funding is available during a filing period versus when um, an apportionment can be made. And if money becomes available during a filing period, but an apportionment can be made until the next filing period, there was a situation before where a district was in that same place and the board did instruct us to go back, go to the implementation committee, and revise the regulations to clarify, to mitigate that problem. And that's part of the, um, the item that was just approved by the board. Right. We won't have this, we won't have as great a problem going forward. We'll still have this date on the list problem um, going forward because, as I understand, you're saying that when we have, when there are a number of projects on the same day mm -hmm. and we can't fund them all, we don't fund any. And again, though, that, that is problem, that can be, I think that's problematic when we're in this really cash-strapped environment where people really want to access the cash. It's summer. It's a perfect time to be going to construction. I, I, would, I think Glendale's right to come forward and say, look, I'm ready to go. Um, but in fairness to say Oakland that sits in front of them, we don't fund Glendale. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, is if, 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 if Oakland were to give it up, if they were to say, I, I, I can't possibly do my project with, you know, a haircut, um, it would go on, it could it go on to Glendale. And, and, and maybe generally we need to look at how we might handle these situations. I know previously in some situations, I don't think it's this, we've done a lottery, right, on that last day. And whoever, you know, if whoever comes, number comes up and it fits the number that we have, we go ahead and, and fund them. But I just think it's really important that district, you know, if we have any possibility of funding them, we do because the money's going to sit there until September. We, we did um, Mr. explore Mr. this issue. Mr. Hagler. I understand the frustration. I mean, I, I do, do believe we need to have 
some rules and stuff to follow because how do you start having staff pick and choose winners because they're yeah. certain amounts? I, I do think we can give staff yeah. authority if you have potential of bringing back $24 million by the end of the July, and we won't meet again until after July, that if you do get the money back for the next funding round day, can we get them authority to fund all three? Yes. Or if they get word from Oakland that they're not ready or want to withdraw, then they have enough for one Friday day. But if you have to fit in this filing period, mm -hmm. can we give them that flexibility if they get the money back? Or if they could talk to Oakland and Oakland says, we know we have to wait. When, the, when those two things, can we give them that authority today to do that? Uh, Mr. Uh, Henry, counsel, is not, in, yes. is, not, is not an action that was listed as an option. And for Bagley Keen purposes, and Oakland's not here to pitch their case. Yeah, you can't, unfortunately, the board is not free to take action on this item because it hasn't been properly agendized. Both parties need an opportunity to um, kind of say that. Well, there's a third, third because there's three projects. Correct. Uh, but to Mr. Hagman's point, though, to the extent that there is sufficient funds come in before uh, July, uh, the, the cutoff period. If enough, if sufficient funds come in, but before the cutoff period and they come in in June, if there were enough for all three, could all three be done? The, the challenge we have is the certifications expire in, in in a few weeks. So if you want to go to projects next in line, that's the system we would have to implement okay. because they would be on the 18-month time clock. What you would it have, won't be a certification round. What you would have to do is have a board meeting before. July 11th? When does the cert list? Yeah, yes. 11. Is expi you would have to take action. Before July. When's the cert list The expire? cert list expires July 10th. July 10th. So yeah. you'd have to have a board meeting before July 10 to apportion any projects because by our regulations, that cert list goes dead on July 10th, correct? Right. So it would, it would mean a special board meeting at Okay, Mr. Hagman. <laughs> we have the 10-day bag of keen issue as well. So that pretty much kills since, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Tab 15. Is our charter item? Charter schools. This item is to discuss what to do with um, remaining cash that was previously set aside for the charter school facility program to give them an opportunity to come in and request design and site funding. The board had made available $94.2 million and gave the charter schools a deadline until May 2nd. Mr. Meredes, assume we have read all this, okay. cut to the chase, and then we can have the folks come and testify. I apologize, but... We're going to yeah. lose members. Uh, Ms. Hancock's not feeling so well. She was for, uh, kind enough to join us for budget issues yesterday and today for this, so I'd like to not keep her here any longer than I have to. Pardon? We are on tab 16. No, no tab uh, 15, charter schools. 15 is charter schools. Action item. Mr. Chair, we have, we have um, I'll go through the options really quickly. Uh, option one is to basically extend the deadline uh, for charter schools to come in for another six months to access the cash for advanced site and design. Uh, option two, extends the deadline just for $15 million to, again, for the projects that have certified that they can come in if you extend the deadline for design and site. But it also reserves cash for projects that are construction ready which is uh, $8.2 million for a project that we have on the uh, unfunded list and $0.9 million for a project on our workload list. The remaining balance of 33.7 would go to projects on the unfunded list. Option three is to extend the deadline only for those four projects that could come in for design and site, the $15 million, and the remaining balance of 42.8 would go to projects on the unfunded list. And the last option, option four, is to use all of the remaining cash, the $57.9 million, to apportion projects on the unfunded list. Staff is recommending that the board approve option one, which is basically extend the deadline 
another six months to allow charter schools to come in and access design and site funding. I think we have folks who want to testify. Board members, do you have any questions? She can make her way here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Moira Top on behalf of the California Charter Schools Association advocates. Uh, we are certainly very pleased with the item before you. We're proud of the fact that um, of the money that you did reserve, um, $50 million has been put to good use or will be put to good use in the coming, um, coming weeks and months as the dollars uh, get allotted to us. Um, the staff option before you, uh, the recommended option before you, is to, um, I think, is, uh, is supported by us in the sense that it, it uh, supports the sentiment that these dollars, if you remember, were reserved by the charter, for charter schools and the charter school program a year ago and then again in December. And these dollars were identified specifically for charter schools. Um, as you know, and we've talked about many, many times before, I won't belabor the point, but, but getting through the process for charters, the, the um, application and the construction projects for charter schools is a particularly lab laborious process. And um, so, uh, while I think we all identified the best guess we could come up with last year of the dollars that could be used, clearly um, there are some schools that uh, after being on the list for several years um, did, not, uh, did not feel the need to come in and, and avail themselves. The staff has identified a number of projects that, um, that are available and ready for construction today. And I think that um, the, the association supports the concept of certainly keeping these, not just keeping these dollars available for charter schools as identified or as recommended by the staff, but in keeping kind of with your sentiment to get, jo get projects uh, going as quickly as possible, but to open up those projects for not just site and design, but for construction projects. To remind you, the, the charter schools, and I think what kind of led us to the, uh, the reservation of the dollars to begin with, Charter schools have received 1.1% of dollars uh, in total of the three bonds that, uh, that you allocate. Um, just the, ne the item you're going to hear next is about the, um, is appropriating the bond sale from the spring. That was $630 million. Charter, the charter program received $3.3 million. We remain at a disadvantage. Again, we're very happy with the progress we've made. Um, but we do see that there is a great opportunity to use the dollars that are remaining in the, res in the charter school reserve account for uh, construction projects and not just for site and design. We think that it should be available as a, on a first come, first serve basis to really kind of, I think, live out the goal that you, you all as a board have set to get projects, to get shovel ready projects going immediately as quickly as possible. With us today, and I know time is very, very brief, and uh, we can make them available for questions and, and uh, to, to whatever degree you'd like, uh, but there are uh, real schools here that can uh, provide uh, definite testimony to you that they are ready to go, they are construction ready, they can probably meet the deadline uh, even earlier than the 180 days set out by your staff, um, but we, we do think that um, Again, the actions you've taken in the last year have jump-started the program, but uh, we need to continue the commitment that the state has made to charter schools when they put these dollars into the Bond Act. Um, we have been at a disadvantage in the past. We're getting closer. We appreciate it, but we really do need to um, take that one next step and, uh, and, and keep these dollars moving, not just for site and design, but for construction. Mr. Chair, if I may. I, I'm, you know, I think the first option is to extend the time period. I'd like to see if we could do, I'll uh, modify that motion to go ahead and extend the time period and, and make the money available for site design and construction. I'd second it. And the reason I, I will tell you the reason that I seconded it, at first I really was concerned about the 33 leftover million kind of from option two, but given that there is no ability to actually spend that funding, um, in the regular program until possibly when the new CERT list is available and they could get it to the board and that's, that could be as early as September and as late as October or November. I'm, I'm prepared to support the entire amount going towards um, charters which we originally designated this funding for and I really encourage those charters that are close to getting out and being able to be shovel ready to move those projects forward. So. Is the movement second? 
has been moved and seconded. Any questions or any additional public comment? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, ayes have it, thank you. Uh, that was item 15. Mr. Almanza. Uh, yes, on item 17. Um, yes, sir. We have um, some internal um, discussions that I'd like a little bit more time to complete, so respectfully request if we could pull item number 17. That's the methods for accepting school facility program applications once once has been exhausted. Okay. Is there objections to pulling that from, for now? Just put it over for next month. Okay. Give folks a chance to work this more through. All right. Thank you. Okay. We then so we're pulling item 17 in case you're tracking. Uh, before I forget, a hey, Bruce. Bruce, would you stick around afterwards, please? I have a question for you. Thanks. Okay, back to 16. Yes, Reader's Digest version. Yes, please. <laughs> Joint use item, um, again, we wanted to share with the board part of the consent agenda and, and the spirit of the um, money that we committed back in uh, April. We did move three items in the consent agenda. That still leaves about over $536,000 available, um, and, but that's from Proposition 1A Mod, Modernization Authority. Um, the next project in line is actually about $1.5 so what we have uh, available uh, is obviously short of what uh, the district's expectation and at this point in time um, we're presenting two options uh, the first option would be providing them another million dollars to fully fund that project however that authority would be coming from proposition 1d modernization bond authority uh, the second option is actually to fully fund all the projects that remains on the joint use application list and that would require an additional 5.7 million in bond authority and so just wanted to highlight to the board no. we have over 35 32 million dollars that were oversubscribed in the modernization program so in essence um, you'll be if we fully fund these projects um, in the joint use category you will be actually taking um, projects that are currently on the modernization workload list that are going through the processing pipeline and you'll be moving them over to the oversubscribed list so the options before the board is uh, those items but staff recommends denying the request for options one and two before we go mr. Hack Hagman and Ms. Moore, here basically from my perspective, this is the way I look at it. For over a year, Ms. Hancock, Senator Hancock, for over a year, we've looked at this transfer of 4.5. We finally got there. But uh, the question then to the board is, do we want to transfer additional resources beyond those 4.5 that we spoke about? My, uh, my view is that that's all we ever said we would transfer where we would be transferring from is modernization fund which is already oversubscribed so if we were to provide additional resources for joint use it comes from folks who the oversubscription would be just be that much greater folks who would be online waiting so I my preference would be there's 500 or so left if the next project wants it they can have it if not then go to the next one until somebody takes it and if not this stays in the modernization fund that's my view Mr. Hagman. So moved. I have a question, however. Um, I Moore. may be a little contrarian on, on that one, but is this, in option one, is the million extra, is that cash? Is that, I mean, if we were to approve option one, is that cash, and would this project be able to go forward right now? That's cash. And here's my concern. We just had two project, two issues where we are not able to, to fund projects because of our um, mechanism right now in place where, the, where these lists expire. So nobody else is going to get cash in this program until September or October, perhaps. And that's you know, that's, that's leftover money, we'd have that in September and October, and if there's a bond sale, we'd have even more. This is a project, and, and I, I agree with you, I think we, we made an agreement on this board for the, for the three that were funded on consent. But this is another project that if we give it the million now, it's, it's a project, and it can, and it has cash, and it can go out and either, you know, it's reimbursement, or it can go out in the economy, and the cash is working for us. 
Otherwise, the million dollars in cash waits around until September to work for somebody else. And so I'm prepared to support one more project completely funded for the additional million in cash. So but you have a substitute motion for the million? I do, and I'll, I'll just try that. Okay, substitute motion for the million. Is there a second? Mr. Chair, I'd like to say something before yes. you vote on this. Um, the one million is a Proposition 1D funding, and there was an AG opinion, in fact, that the joint use can only be funded, was limited to the 1998 Bond Act, which uh, the 1D is a 2006 Bond Act. And so um, what this means is if you were to extend a one, one million and fund joint use, there may be a risk to the board. I just want to... Um, Are you saying we have an option before us that's not legal? Well, I, I'm just trying to... Yeah, it's a questionable option that you have right now. But we, we got approval from the AG and we got the treasurer who was asking for that legal opinion. So I'm comfortable with that. You sound, you look like you want to come up and say something, so go ahead. Mike is yours. So is this on? Um, good afternoon, uh, chair, members, and staff. Uh, my name is Corinne Lascott, representing Corinne Lascott Consulting, and I'm here on behalf of the Redondo Beach Unified School District. And I want to thank you very much for funding the three projects on the consent calendar. Our Adams Middle School Joint Use Gym was on that. The fourth project on the date ordered list is the Paris Middle School Joint Use Gym. And I believe it's the one that um, Ms. Moore was speaking about, and it's the one that could actually use your cash. It's the one that has a request for $1.5 million. We are by no means feeling entitled to this money. We respect the AG opinion, respect your initial effort to get the three funded. We just thought we'd reiterate some of the points that we put in our letter requesting your support and consideration wanting uh, everyone to understand that this project is a very successful project along with the Adams project. They're both constructed now and in use. This money, however, would still go to work. Any dollars from the state allocation board would actually backfill what the district front end funded for the state's share and go towards the next project in their capital program. It still means jobs. It still means positive things for the economy. So the partial funding that we might be offered if there is no action in support of option one is less than 20% of the actual cost of this project. So it's a tough spot for the district to be in, certainly better than nothing, but it's a tough spot for the district to be in to say we'll take $536,000 of what's effectively a more than $4 million project. So what we're here asking for is just your consideration for the full funding of that project, it is 1.5 million, and the district uh, really just wants to, to thank you for the funding of the consent item as well. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Somebody else also? Christina Becker with Santee Schools, and I'm the Director of Maintenance Operations Facilities and Warehouse, and I'm here to thank you because we've done so many joint use projects. You have no idea what it's done for our community and the economy in our area. What I did is yesterday when I saw the grappling decision and the cons that were in that action item, because it's my remaining projects that are all on that list also, is thank you for funding the third project, which is ours. We can't wait to get that going. And um, that I removed four projects from that list in asking, um, my recommendation is if you could find 3.3 million, if I did my math right, um, and to fund the project ahead of us and the ones that I have already DSA approval from and what I have my board and my community saying these are the most important to us, we would love to see that. But I know that I have projects on that unfunded mod list too. And it has been a, a hope in our hearts for this year, saying, well, they haven't sent back those joint use, so maybe, you know, there, there's a chance. And so many things happen every month that it's hard for me to even understand all the funding, that if you have to make a tough decision, could it be that you don't send them back and see if there's a way to find 3.3 before you know, someday instead of saying it's all done and dead. And I thank you for your time.
excuse me, the way it would work is it's 537,000 and then staff would then up to that up to the next in line. Thank you, Lyle. Okay. I always think that my voice carries without a microphone, but that's just in my own hearing. Um, so there's no mo there's no second to the motion of transferring a million dollars. So procedurally, what will happen then is there's 537 available that will be made available to the next project if they so choose to take that money. If not, then it goes to the next and the next and so forth until the 537 is spent. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. However, if no one takes the money, then it stays in proposition. Excuse me, it stays in the, the modernization fund. Money. So to fund half a million worth of modernization projects. Okay. And then the other applications will have to be returned. Yes, and then that was my second point. So that we don't have this false hope that we don't have the money for that anyhow. So okay, so that's kind of where we are um, on that item. Thank you. And my motion doesn't even require, I mean, my comment wasn't even require a motion. So, but thank you, Mr. Hagman. Next item is then you ask for 70 to be pulled uh, to work some stuff out. Tab 18. It's the report section. The report section. Thank you. I think that's it for board action items. Is that correct? That's it. Anything that's, that's correct. pending? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hagman. Appreciate your presence, sir. Senator Hancock, hope you feel better. Thank you so much for making it such a difficult day. Yes. Thank you, Hans, for taking care of her. <laughs> Reports. Thank you. Mr. Wanabe. Uh, we're on tab 18, page 437 in your books. Um, this report to the board is just kind of highlight to the board. Um, came as a result of some discussions we've had in the new construction subcommittees and at the board in terms of projects moving off the unfunded list. Right now, the regulations do not, pro do not provide a process for moving projects off the unfunded approval list once they're approved by the board. So what we've done is we've kind of summarized on page 437 We've, we've now had four priority funding rounds where pro districts had the option to participate in the priority funding process. And what we did is took a look at that list and looked for uh, con consistently, uh, districts that consistently said no to participating or opted not to participate. And what we found is in that table on 437 is there's currently 143 projects on the unfunded list that have said that have chosen not to participate in the priority funding round in the last two rounds we've had. Um, further, as a subset of that, 81 projects chose not to participate in the last three rounds. And further, as a subset of that 143, 21 projects have not participated in any of the uh, funding rounds that we've had so far. Now, on page 438, we kind of break up those categories to show that these projects are in a variety of categories. They're, they're not just new construction or modernization. They are also in career tech, um, overcrowded relief grant program. We have charter projects on the list. Um, this is just for informational purposes. We have not analyzed the data in terms of why these particular districts are on the list, uh, have chosen not to participate. Uh, we've heard an anecdotal information, but that's about it at this point. So with that, I can uh, field any questions. Any public comments on this? Okay, moving on. Well, I, I just have a comment. Um, as I, I guess I would want to know more over um, why they haven't moved. And, and with the opportunities, there could be a, lot, a variety of reasons, but I think it would be important to the board to know that um, you know, we have the 18th month stipulation in law and such, um, but as we get closer to drawdown of allocation and we're facing two years of, um, before the potential of another bond, a bond on the ballot, um, it's going to get um, critical that projects 
um, that are that are taking up authority um, are moving are 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 cons we, we consider those, and I think it has to go hand in glove with the other issue of the unfunded list. Now we didn't talk about that today, so we'll talk about it um, at our next board meeting, but. That those two issues are intertwined, and I would think that when we talk about um, the unfunded list in the next board meeting, that we're also talking about this issue because they're intertwined. And if we, um, you know, it depends on how we treat that unfunded list as to how this this issue might be solved. But I do see an issue for those districts that may be ready to go. And, and for whatever reason, districts are sitting in front of them and have not availed themselves to the bond authority for four different times. And I, I just think we're going to have to consider that. Um, and, and, you know, before I thought, particularly when we did our first priorities in funding, and I think we wanted, a, you know, districts were very good partners in moving forward on a new program. Um, this program's been in place for, what, now two and a half years? And we're going to come to a time where authority and then cash are very, very valuable. Um, so I, 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 I'm gl thank you for the report, but I think we should consider it hand in glove when we consider the unfunded approval list as well. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Okay. Next item. Tab 19, it's the uh, 90 day workload report. Do so we have any questions on that item? Michael, no. Okay, none. None. That's 20. Wrap it up. Okay. Is there any public comment? Lyle. Good afternoon. Um, this is about the agenda item you've held over, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I think it's number 17 until next month. Um, the, when it comes back, there's an issue about the first three uh, options that are on that uh, item that I question their legality, uh, the, the ability of this board to create any one of those three options, and I'd like to see uh, legal counsel opine as to whether any one of those first three options are uh, legal uh, in the final discussion about that issue. Thank you, Lyle. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, meeting's adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Members that were here from the beginning, appreciate your participation and apologize for the rushness, but we clearly lost all legislators quickly. Thank you.